Don't forget to subscribe to Steven C. Killer. Now get back in the grave, gutbag! What's up, guys? Steven C. Killer here, bringing another reaction. And today we're watching the newest episode of Death Battle. All right, so we're checking out a fight between two iconic villains. And the villains are Sethroth versus uh, Virgil from Final Fantasy facing Devil May Cry. Now, I'll be honest, I never played too much of um, Final Fantasy, so Sethroth does uh, knowledge of him, not so much. Virgil, I did play the Devil's May Cry game series, and I did enjoy them a lot. And I think I'm going to side with Virgil based on me knowing him more as a character. But who knows, my ideas could change, but I'm going to stay with my choice. Uh, let me know who you guys chose. Um, this is a death battle, so link in the description below. If you guys want to check out the original fight and everything else. Uh, hopefully you guys are enjoying your Christmas break uh, and or just Christmas holiday stuff with your families and stuff, especially with Christmas just around the corner or just holiday events for some others. So yeah, let's get into this episode. I am happy to say that um, I, I, I'm going to be posting quite a few things and or doing some very special streams uh, in the next couple days for Christmas. So look out for that stuff, okay guys? Alright, so first off, let's get up the video. Uh, let's boom. And uh, yeah, once again, link in the description below. Go uh, support Screw Attack and everything for Death Battle. Now let's get into this episode right now. The great philosopher Plato once said, the measure of a man is what he does with power. But to these guys, power is the measure of a man. Sephiroth, the fearsome one-winged angel of Final Fantasy. And Virgil, the half-demon son of Sparta from Devil right. May Cry. He's Sorry, I saw my glasses were a little bit crooked. It's our job to analyze their weapons, right, you guys know me, I tilt it upward so that there's no glare on my man. lens. And uh, it's still, it, it, it's like a little pet Through peeve, like audio, and the and the straightness of my glasses energy. is a pet peeve. That's be, it has to be nice. Unfortunately, all hope of finding this sacred ground had been lost until the Shinra electric power. Oh, and I will say this: I know there's a lot of people who don't care for Death Battle's choice of information. We're just going to take this base off of stuff. Uh, this is not an actual like definitive answer on who will win this fight but enjoy for what it is and hopefully you chose correctly on your choice of victor company excavated the remains of a being believed to hail from the very land they sought they called this weird naked purple lady genova and thought that if they could bring her back to life she could help them find the promised land but apparently, i remember some things uh with um other fights involving uh sethroth but not a Shinra lot decided they would simply create their own after many experiments infusing Genova's cells with those of a humans, they finally found their savior. His name was Sephiroth. Doesn't sound like much of a savior. Like that, it's no wonder he was created in a lab. Look at how majestic that mane is. According to Final <laughs> Fantasy lore, Sephiroth has to use an entire bottle of shampoo and conditioner every single time he bathes. Why do An entire goddamn club or something uh, for research, uh, but Shinra wasn't interested in Sephiroth. That is very weird and research. Instead, he was an essential part of their soldier program. Wait, wait! This electric company has their own private military. I'd hate to miss a payment with those guys. <laughs> Sent Seth after me. I mean, look at the ridiculously long sword he keeps with him. That's yeah, his fucking name. katana is huge. Seven foot two behemoth of a blade is a lot like the no dodgy swords they used back in feudal Japan. But instead of wielding something long with two hands like those, Sephiroth only needs one. Even that speaks nothing of his effectiveness as a warrior. Yeah, you know when people spread legends of someone, they usually make him out to be even better than he really is? It's the total opposite with Sephiroth. With his super He's actually better than his legends. Sephiroth was instrumental in ensuring Shinra's victory in the Wutai War, conquering the last free nation on the planet. He returned home a legend, 
But all those warm, fuzzy feelings of victory didn't last long. Huh. While on a mission to the town of Nibelheim, Sephiroth found a bunch of books on the Genova Project. That's when he discovered he was a secret science project the whole time. The truth crushed Sephiroth and drove him mad. Wow, okay. I'm sorry I'm not talking much, but this is information store-wise I don't know anything about. Sephiroth was impaled by the Buster Sword and fell to his death. Oh, well, that's disappointing. Which is what I would have said if Sephiroth hadn't dropped into a hole in the ground that led him to the giant Windows screensaver called the Lifestream. The Lifestream is a buried river of energy which basically maintains life across the planet. Normally, merging with the life stream is the equivalent of entering the afterlife, but not for Sephiroth. Because his body was probably so much different than a normal human, being manufactured and all. Through the life stream for years until he absorbed enough energy to rebuild his body. With the energy of the life stream, he could control other beings with Genova cells, including the corpse of Wow. Genova, okay. Who he manipulated like a puppet and disguised as himself. Oh, what the hell? That's his mom? Who would do that to their own mom? I mean, I know she's a genocidal alien monster, but come on. Probably makes a good breakfast. But Sephiroth's <laughs> descent into the life stream offered him even more. It transformed him from a mere super soldier into the most dangerous being on the planet. He's strong enough to throw a man hundreds of feet skyward, move at supersonic speeds, and withstand brutal stab wounds no, from vital there. organs. <laughs> He's got illusion powers that can trick people by creating an entirely fake scenario. He can lift people with his mind. All right, well, I already can say he he's a lot fly. more than so I was expecting. Additionally, Sephiroth can cast magic thanks Virgil to might be a little materia. bit on the materia having some toughness energy, against this guy. Different powers according to the type of material used. This lets Sephi attack with fire, lightning, ice, and earth-based magic. He can block a Damn. barrier and reflect and heal himself with cure and regen. Ooh, and okay. So he does have a human factor. He's unlimited access to his magical powers. With his new godlike abilities, Sephiroth began a plan to stop mankind from drying up the planet's life force. That doesn't sound so scary. Does that mean he's an environmentalist or... But to do this, he decided to use black materia to summon a giant meteor to destroy the planet and absorb all of its life energy for himself. Wait, so like, to save the planet, planet, you have to blow up the planet? planet? What? I mean, we're talking about a guy who kicked a dude through solid concrete, murdered the crap out of a 30-foot serpent with a spike through the face, and tanked a dragon's flamethrower attack without even getting a teensy bit hurt. A particularly impressive feat, considering this attack was capable of one-shotting fellow soldier Zack Fair. Uh, Wiz, Damn. Prescription, because that's definitely Cloud. No, no, no. Cloud was just recalling false memories. There, it was really Zack. However, it was Cloud who impaled Sephiroth pre-life stream with the Buster Sword. And holy God, is it huge! It's like two feet wide. You'd think it's yeah, that... From that thing would just cut him in half. Sip just kind of shook it off. And in his rematch with Cloud, he blocked an attack strong enough to crater the metal around him. Considering the diameter of the crater, the surface area of Sephiroth's feet, and assuming the most likely steel composition, I estimate this attack to equal nearly 1,600 tons of force. He did that with his bare hand? God damn. Want to be heroes by their rib cage, slice through skyscrapers, and shoot energy beams that can shred these huge. Well, yeah, I knew Seth Rolf was not going to be a pushover, but god damn, there's a lot more to him that I did not know about. These forms greatly resemble certain creatures found in Christian and Jewish mythology. He certainly looks the part when he goes into his ultimate form. Regardless, Sephiroth does possess a single black wing. A blatant symbol of his fall from grace. So basically, Final Fantasy huh, does okay. everything it can to not be subtle. Just like Sephiroth's most devastating attack, Supernova, which decimates an entire solar system. Wait, if Zeph is that powerful, how does anyone ever beat him? Don't get the wrong idea here. There's a lot of debate over how Supernova actually works, but I think it's pretty clear that Sephiroth isn't creating the explosion himself. Rather, he's transporting his foes to a specific point in time within an alternate dimension. Careful, Wiz. Don't sell him short. Just look at it. When he uses the attack, reality literally crumbles away like glass. This is identical to the animation for certain Wow. According to the official Crisis Core Complete Guide, Holy shit, I'm sorry. Wow. Space in order to attack. And this is no different. In the city of Fighting Games, Sephiroth goes for the simple approach and opens a dimensional hole to the explosion. 
The attack is even described as sending destruction even into other dimensions. And if he could summon planet-busting meteors at will, why did he go through so much trouble to get the black material? Which so basically, he's teleporting meteors. somebody to a supernova that's supernova happening. Okay. okay. He's not really there, just using those illusion powers of his. With all these powers, I can't believe Cloud and friends were able to take him down. He's not invincible, but he's damn powerful. Ever persistent, Sephiroth yeah. departed with a final chilling promise. I will never be a memory. Why does he sound so bored? <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Thousand years ago. Now it's been a, a long. It's been a while since I played Devils May Cry. Um, I will ha I will be honest. I played the first one, the second one, and the third one. I never really finished the fourth one, uh, but I did play those three. But I haven't played it since PS2 era, so my memory is a little bit on the of uh, basically I don't fully remember everything. So this might be interesting to rewatch and re remember. So fired in the underworld. The demon warrior Sparta rebelled against his evil master, Mundus. To protect the world, Sparta did his best to seal the connection between Hell and Earth. But then Sparta got lonely. Or maybe it was just a sausage fest in there. Either way, he snuck out of Hell long enough to knock up this chick named Eva. And she popped out a couple of awesome demon slayers. <laughs> nice you may remember the younger of the two, Dante. Dante. Oh yeah, he fought that witch chick with the hair. But the eldest <laughs> and potentially deadliest brother was the one and only Virgil. Virgil and Dante were rivals from birth. Dante was a goofball. Virgil was serious. Dante hated his being a demon, and Virgil loved it. It's that classic odd couple scenario. But then one fateful day, in an act of vengeance against the late Sparta, a group of rogue demons separated the two brothers and killed their mother. Virgil was Damn. dead. But in reality, Virgil survived and set out on his own path to seek his father's immense power for himself. And he's 100% equipped to be a butt-kicking demon slayer just like his pups. As a half-demon, <laughs> Virgil can jump several times his own height, move at supersonic speeds, and heal himself quickly, kind of like that Wolverine guy. He can tough out getting Yeah, I knew the healing factor of Virgil was going to be tough, so that's why I was sure looking out for a healing factor for Sethiroth. Say something, Wiz? I said not if Virgil's abilities have anything to say about it. Well, sadly, for any human demon or human demon who gets in his way, Virgil also happens to carry some extra deadly weapons on hand, including a spivy katana called Tomato. Yamato. Eh, it's Yamato. <laughs> it can cut tomato. Anything, even dimensions, and probably tomatoes. Actually, Yamato is the exact thing Sparta used to seal hell from Earth in the first place. Virgil's huh. sword fighting prowess draws I do remember from his some of this. Slayer fighting style, which emphasizes but also, I'll, I'll mention this too. I played Devil May Cry over my friend's house. He owned it. I never truly owned the game, so that's another reason why I'm probably not going to remember a lot because I did play and beat it, but me and he would always switch off controllers every time we died. So it was more of a. I played at my friend's house because I didn't own the game. <laughs> In quick movements and even quicker slashes straight from the sheet. This technique is directly influenced by EI Jutsu, the real life Japanese art of the quick draw. And thanks to Virgil's demonic powers, he can attack so fast the blade seems invisible. Yeah, the only thing better than fighting with one sword is fighting with eight. With Virgil. Well, what the fuck? Ghostly okay, randomly my fucking thing paused itself. Fire them like a machine. Don't know how. Or make it rain. Blades may be Virgil's bread and butter, but if he needs to focus on brute strength, he switches to Beowulf. He can charge up yep. with an eye punches and kicks that hit like a cement truck made of lead and KO some of the toughest demons in just a few hits. And hey, looks like he digs Street Fighter. There's one more <laughs> trick up Virgil's Thanks to his demon blood, he can access a form known as Devil Trigger. And this mode amplifies yeah. everything. His strength, speed, and healing all get a huge boost, making him several times deadlier than before. Plus, he just looks badass. In his quest, <laughs> as powerful as his father, Virgil's abilities skyrocketed. 
He's taken down dozens of demons in the blink of an eye and escaped an illusion from the sorcerer Arkham, which makes normal people go crazy. But if anything's gonna show off what a son of Sparta can really do, it's pitting him against his bro. Sure, Virgil can easily avoid Dante's bullets, but why dodge them when you can spin your sword, line them all up, and fire them back? Like a boss. In the same battle, <laughs> Damn. they briefly created a 12-foot diameter open space in a heavy rainstorm with nothing but their sword swings. On average, storms can fill a cubic foot space with as many as 30 raindrops. So, Virgil and Dante must have destroyed 108,000 raindrops in less than a second. If Holy shit balls. Fast, I bet he'd make a killing mowing lawns, or chopping meat at the deli, or giving haircuts, or doing that thing <laughs> where he chops bad guys to pieces so fast they don't even realize they're dead yet. Like when he fought Bale. Until he clinks, yep. Monster, not the weapon. And then he punched him so hard he flew 55 feet up and hit the ceiling. When comparing Beowulf's size to Virgil, he appears to be as large as an elephant. Given what's available, this seems like our best measure of Virgil's strength, but there is one issue. The Devil May Cry series makes frequent use of slow motion to depict the absurdity of these characters, and this could be a similar case. So let's look at another slow-mo feat, the rainstorm fight. At one point, the rain freezes in place for about two and a half seconds as Virgil and Dante keep moving, indicating a 14,500% speed. In Why does it keep pausing? What the fuck? Stop time. it. Applying the same degree to the Why are you doing that? gives us an acceleration speed of about 4,882 feet per second. With that in mind, we can apply our previous data to deduce the maximum height sand ceiling and determine Virgil's striking strength to be nearly 720 million newtons of force. Damn! It matches Virgil's incredible toughness, too. We already mentioned his super healing factor, but it's even more overpowered than you think. Virgil once got completely cut in half, but healed so fast that it's impossible to even notice. And his regeneration ability can be worn down. Yeah, that's how this weird jester guy beat him. But it takes a lot to pull off. Okay. And Virgil can always just use Yamato to hop through dimensions to get away if he wants. Sadly, Virgil never got to... Okay, like so... He, he can hop through dimensions. King Mundus permanently that might be a good thing, but at the same time, Seth Rock can do that whole mind in the supernova attack. Dante kind of, uh, exploded him. But one or two losses against someone who's basically goddamn Satan hardly makes him a weakling. Hell and Earth trembles before the power of Virgil. Alright, I will not be surprised if Seth Roth wins, but I'm sticking with my gun and picking Virgil. So... I feel like Seth Roth may be able to pull the win here easily. Uh, or not easily, but... It's like... For me, I want Virgil to win, but I can see Seth Roth winning just the same... Uh, why'd you unpause? Right, like a are set. Let's Choose! Stop for doing things without but my permission! As I was saying, it is very close, but I will not be surprised if Seth Roth still wins. Um, but let me know how you guys feel. Dice in your kitchen. Boom! Let's go! And we got this 3D art style. You are powerful. I can see it. Hell yeah. Who are you? Your despair. Let's go. <laughs> Zethroth does has a big fucking sword. God damn. Bringing out the fucking close combat shit already. The magic's gonna be tough for Virgil, but his healing factor is really gonna take in place. But in comparison, I wonder how much of a healing factor compared to uh, Virgil Sethroth has. Ooh, got a good cut on him. Okay, you're strong, but are you fast enough? Ooh. Oh! I would love to say that, that Virgil has a speed factor. Can't be helped. Oh, here comes the wings. He duplicated himself. They're fake. 
Stop wasting my time. Oh, damn, bringing up the demon form already. Ooh, come on. Let's go. Oh, that looks fucking badass. These two fighting are legit. Oh, come on. Stop doing that. Why are you... Why are you pausing? I don't get why he's doing that. So this is what I was afraid of. Can he get? I saw can he? The fact technically, couldn't he get out of that dimension? So I cast or an illusion to disguise this witness oblivion. Oh shit! Oh fuck! He cut out of it, like I thought. But he's still pretty fucked up. Oh damn! The healing factor ran out. Oh no! So you are. Oh! KO! Oh! Extra crispy. These two were extremely powerful swordsmen, but Sephiroth's cunning and stronger abilities led to his victory. Wait a minute! I thought the lore said Virgil's sword could cut through anything. Why didn't it cut through Sephiroth's sword? Yamato was a unique weapon, but its legend clearly exaggerated. On multiple occasions, it's clashed with. Oh come on, stop Dante's pausing it yourself. Common rocket launcher without cutting through either, and sometimes requires an exuberant amount of force to cut through tougher material. But let's discuss the real facts. Yeah. Like strength. So Virgil with Beowulf could do 720 million newtons, right? But there aren't a lot of good semi strength feats to compare. First, let's compare Sephiroth to a fellow first class member of the soldier fighting force who had also this is annoying me. This is so fucking stupid. I'm trying to pay attention, damn it. Remember him? He's the not cloud guy who fought that dragon. Not cloud guy. his peak, Zack could cut through a large metal door with one swing, seemingly with most of his strength. Given the size and width of the door, this feat's sheer strength comes out to 980 million newtons. And Seph was way stronger Oh, damn. In fact, if we look at their strength stats when they fought that dragon, Sephiroth was three and a half times stronger than Zack. Putting Sephiroth's strength output at over wow. a billion new Fucking A, why are you doing it? As much force as 30 Hiroshima bombs. I, I, I don't get why it's doing that. Like, there must be something being clicked on or something within my keyboard. could survive plenty of hits because his healing power is broken. The capabilities of Virgil's healing factor was nearly unprecedented, but it had its limits. In contrast, Sephiroth's healing abilities were only limited by his pool of magic, which was unlimited. Well, he also had to take some time to cast each healing spell, but that's why he distracted Virgil with his illusions. We know Virgil was Oh, that's okay, so attacks, he was using healing magic, so as long as his mana was uh good and, and he had Sephiroth's the ability to do the mag Okay, I must have missed that part. Yeah, Virgil's healing was pretty awesome, but it was never going to hold up under an exploding sun to the face. Virgil put yeah. up a good fight, but he couldn't match Sephiroth's superior strength, magic, and techniques. Looks like this devil All right, yeah. for the last time. I can agree with this outcome. Sephiroth. Even though I chose wrong, it's fine. Damn, Chad, I play Boomstick. Ben, I play Wiz. If you want to get the fight music for this episode of Death Battle, just click the link in the description and you can pick it up on iTunes. And that was the season finale. Versus Wonder Woman, Naruto vs. Zichko, a bunch of Death Battles. And if you want exclusive commentary on this episode, then click that box right over there in the corner. Thank you so much for joining us for Death Battle. Oh my four. god. And you unpause awesome yourself. What the fuck? Season, season five. Ooh, that's gonna be good. They get a couple months off. They probably they, they probably well deserves. Well deserved. Well deserved. So I can agree with that outcome. It was very uh very good, very good. And uh, overall I love the animation. They did a top-notch job. Uh, good choice of people, and um, everything went pretty well. Like I didn't know too much about Seth Roth, uh, except for a few other fights I've watched. But it's been a while since I've seen the information, and uh, of course, their information is going to be a little bit different than other people's information on 
on Sephiroth and uh, other animation fights and everything else like that. So, it was good to recap on everything. I, I enjoyed it quite a bit. And hopefully you guys enjoyed this reaction with me. Link in the description below. Don't forget to show your support. And maybe if you guys want more, don't forget to, uh, to subscribe to me. Hit that notification bell, especially if you want to watch, check me live when I do live streams and or uh, just post videos. And uh, don't forget to also punch that like button. So until next time, guys. Later. Thanks for watching this video, everyone. Hope you enjoyed it, and if you want more, check out the description below. Hope to see you guys in a later video. Also, have an awesome day.